Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 517. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. First up is a day in the life of Port Lane, executive producer of My Little Pony, Make Your Mark. In the June slash July 2023 issue of uh, Animation Magazine, there's a page showing what a typical workday is like for My Little Pony, Make Your Mark, executive producer Courtlane. Uh, this is the only article about My Little Pony in the issue of the magazine. Uh, as it turns out, on that day, he had a meeting and video call and did a final review of uh, Bridalwood, uh, Bridalwood Stock Special. Okay, uh, so just looking through. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm just looking through, not really going into the article yet. Okay, now let's go into it because there's nothing much. Um, so I'm guessing the magazine or whatever it is, there's something like, I, uh, A Day in Life, this month we catch up with popular Toontown mover and shaker called Lane, who, sorry, who is E1's developer, vice president, and executive producer on the show My Little Pony, Make Your Mark. Uh, the pick the pick big crunch day as the team put the finishing touches on the 40th anniversary special by the Woodstock. Uh, with teams in four cities across countries, the special launched June 6th on Netflix. I think already passed. So he wakes up at 6.45 a.m. It's time to make breakfast with my three tiny uh, tyrants. Uh, tyrants. Super, supervising, all right. Then 7.30 a.m. Working on working with brand team in London means early morning teams update from home. Showing over promo art and our Bridal Woodstock celebrating guest Sophia Wei Wei Lai Wei Li Man I am bad with names who voices Ruby Jules nine AM arrive arrive my team Alex and Ari and I work out of Hasbro Epics uh, Burbank California office. Then ten uh, weekly creative review with our bri brilliant Atomic Cartoon partners in Vancouver. Loving the final VFX renders from our director Will Lau. 5.11.30. Cool. I mean, you, you guys can read this on your own, but it does... Uh, <laughs> how do I put this? It's a very interesting thing to see a day in a life where you get to see them do this and that and kind of get into it but not too in depth because trade secrets and whatnot but you get to see that yeah he he wakes up early and then uh at the get go he already starts working and the reason why he starts at seven thirty AM is because he has to work with Europeans who are leaving a few hours behind or ahead of him. I I'm Ahead of him, yes. So, um, working a few hours ahead of him. So, he, to to him, he may be morning, but to the Europeans, they could be in the afternoon and so on. Okay. Then, uh, goes to the office and everything seems like, this is really cool. Like, just beat by beat doing uh, work. Like, there's a schedule to his thing. Uh, he has a half an hour meeting with the uh, animation team at uh, Vancouver and just checking out the animations and so on, like the effect, is, is this good, is this bad? Uh, can we proceed? Can we not proceed? Uh, is there anything we need to change? And so on. So, <clears throat> that's pretty cool. And uh, 12, playtime at work, Alex and I ran up this and update from the toy team on Pony Toys inspired by this special. So, 
Yeah, so basically he's just keeping he's just doing work, 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 nonstop. Um there's a gap between two thirty and twelve. I'm guessing lunch is there, so yeah. Uh twelve the three hour time difference means uh files come in from afternoon review, final permix of the Bridal Woodstock special means the last review for the exec. Mm, so okay. And goes home and yeah. So the day in life of um this is pretty cool. Uh in all honesty, I wish we'd had that for our G4 teams where we get to see a life in uh, a day in a life uh, in Lauren Faust or um <coughs> Megan and so on. I mean that would be fun to see. Like uh how do they um start their day and whatnot? Uh, do what was the responsibility? What was the day like for them there and so on? I mean, that could be really cool if we had to. Uh, we get to see that. And yeah, uh, this from what I'm guessing is just uh, animation magazine, nothing to do with Hasbro and whatnot. Maybe we can see things uh, from other creators, like probably Steven Universe if they have it and so on. Blah blah blah. So it'll be fun to see. <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's move on. Custom Illustrated My Little Pony game from Hasbro's 100th anniversary. Really now? Hasbro's 100 years old? Same as Disney? Huh. That is fascinating. Alright, let's check it out. It's been a few years. It, sorry, it has been a few. Blah, 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 blah. It's been a few years. Uh, look up exact date makes that a decade since US a. Uh, Paul D. I'm sorry. I'm 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 just processing the words. Is, is there a typo? Is that real? And Hasbro released the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic limited edition Monopoly game. Well, today Hasbro and WS Games Company have announced the creation of the brand new limited edition My Little Monopoly board game in celebration of. Hasbro's 100th anniversary. Uh, and as you can probably tell from the above image, chosen to represent My Little Pony in this edition of My Little Pony is Pinkie Pie. Uh, the game is available for pre-order with an expected release date of September 1st via W Games Company or Hasbro Pulse. If you want more details, please check the full press release in additional image after the break. So I'm just gonna skip down through and just um uh, pick some things out. So okay, this one. Uh, thank you to our partners at Hasbro for entrusting us with the creative development and manufacturing of significant milestone games that carry AIDS. 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 Vice President of production, sorry, product, product development, WS Game Company. Hasbro has uh, seamlessly in, 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 in trail, in, in trail, in, uh, in trail generation, in, in trail, in trail generations after generations with its fun loving characters, games, and brands. This limited edition, my little, mm, Monopoly. Celebrates their centennial and beautiful capture just a handful of their most impactful brands over the years. Uh, encapsulated in the embossed unique collected tin box, the board component and packaging highlight Hasbro's most acclaimed brands, including Transformers, Peppa Pig. My Magic the Gathering. I have problems with them. God dang it. Uh, My Little Pony, Nerf, and Cranium, which are all, uh, which are all also celebrating anniversary in the next year. The game premium features include custom tokens, house, and hotels that feature Hasbro's most iconic characters and brands such as Potato Head, Play Doh, Tonka, and more. Custom game board and 
uh, components featuring 90 Hasbro brands. Collectible tin packaging with integrated storage to provide a premium game experience as well as a checklist for players to identify all the included brands. I'm just going to stop there because um, <clears throat> my reading is not great today. Somehow it's bad. So anyway, uh, we're just going to open up and see. So what is this? All right, cool, 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 cool. So the 100th anniversary tin uh, is, well, basically features the Monopoly game board and game pieces in a collectible tin all in one place, in, all in one place. So uh, it's in tin, uh, it's embossed, uh, giving you that premium feel. Uh, you get to see how the game board looks like for a bit on the tin. But I think it's just mostly to show off that, yo, this is, um, if you're a fan of Monopoly, uh, this is a, this is a board you want to get. This is just uh, once in a lifetime. Then uh, when we check out the next page, we get to see how the game board, the play pieces are going to look like. So uh, let's get, let's, let's, let's do a zoom in. Let's do a zoom in. <clears throat> so you got your um, cards to uh, your title deed cards and so on. So we get something like uh, Power Rangers, Furbies, Potato Head, Nerf, uh, Monopoly, Monopoly and a Monopoly. <laughs> your dog, I heard you like Monopoly. So uh, we also see that they have their uh, money arranged in their in the box, also pieces and whatnot. And and I'm, I'm thinking this is uh, plastic plus felt. So this is, if it's true, that, that is really good that, 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 that has that premium feel and this is kind of what i want like uh the board piece the thing that comes in it is not used uh, it's not junk you can still use it for what you call this uh place to put your play piece um uh, money the plot of land whatever it is so let's check it out okay so this is the uh checklist so okay can you find them all so there's action man aggravation and in the pants access and allies the real life barrel and monkey so uh yeah we, we get to see all right here's the game board check out can you find them all and i i see gem in the hologram so is gem in the hologram there uh should be uh i don't see maybe spot them here but uh, we see what? Uh, G.I. Joe. Do, do, I think that's a Joe. Probably. I don't know. Oh, man. Dinkara talks about this guy. Who's that robot name again? Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, wow. Okay. But. <clears throat> but like I mentioned before, um, this is kind of cool. Uh, you, you got your chances. You got your token. TP token and whatnot. You got your host. Hells and houses, cool. So money, uh, play pay. Uh, there's thing at the back, cookie okay, cool. Yeah, this look, this looks good. This looks fun. And last but not least, uh, an above shot of everything. So grab. Oh, that's cool. You you have the rangers behind the stuff. You got um. Wow, this this looks really fun. Play pieces and whatnot. You know, I'll probably get this one if it's available. I mean, <coughs> um, there. What you call this? This is one of those boards where it's uh, pretty neat. It's pretty um historical. Uh, we we see Wizards of the Coast. If you've got no idea who they are. They're a subsidiary of Hasbro, dealing more with Magic the Gathering and also Dungeons and Dragons. They had issues with when, not gonna say much, because it's all over the news. Uh, yeah, the, the board looks fun, you got two dice, and yeah, okay, um, I'll say this, um, in terms of artistic value and merit this looks pretty good this looks kind of fun uh 
possible cohesion? This is a mess. Like, the only, the only way you get to know or the only way you can tell that this is uh, where the plot of land is, is just by the square here. Uh, so like Lincoln Log, Tato Head, little, little pet shop, and so on. So that's how you can tell that, okay, this is the, how should we call this, um, plots of land that it lands on and so on. Because, oi, is it messy? Is it messy? But overall, um, I mentioned before, I won't mind getting one of this for myself. This looks like a lot of fun. And last news for the week. <clears throat> Two more pages reveal from My Little Pony role-playing game core rulebook. Uh, Steph, what's this? WWE? Oh god. We have another pair of pages from the core rulebook of the upcoming My Little Pony role-playing game from Renegade. This one sh Oh god, shows uh, of the bunch, show of the a bunch of different things from magic to items and healing. Down, uh, head on down below for the second page. And if you missed previous, you can catch. Okay, uh, let's check it out. Let's check it out. All right, <coughs> spirit of magic. What is this? Um, the elements of harmony are. The most powerful magic known to Ponydom. Magic is both an element of harmony and the source of the bonds between the other elements of harmony. It is also the most mysterious element. What is magic? It. Uh, in what way does a pony who embodies magic also embodies harmony? And what is magic's connection to friendship? Even Twilight Sparkle, the first spirit of magic, had more questions than answers. But that's okay. Spirit of magic loves questions. <clears throat> so what I'm guessing here is um, there's six spirit, according to all the um, elements. So you have generosity, kindness, laughter, honesty, loyalty, and also magic. Yep, yep, yep. So you have six of them, and uh, those represent some things. And uh, looking at <clears throat> what it says here, uh, an element apart. It's easy to see how being generous, honest, the uh, generous, honest, kind, loyal, and Making people laugh creates friendship. Of course, you can make friends using magic in the same way that you can make soup using magic. You have to figure out on your own what it is about magic you embody and what friendship means to you. Great responsibility. Every pony has witnessed magic, um, witnessed magic and knows that casting a Spell can change everything. Not every pony understands that you might not be sorry, might not have the right spell for every situation. You might not even be a spellcaster. Even if you are a spellcaster, you uh, caster and your spells would help your friends. That's a lot of pressure. Spell casting takes a lot of time and energy. As such, sorry, as much as. You might love to spend all day using your magic to help others with their issues. That doesn't leave any time to deal with your own issues or just relax and not think about any issues at all. <clears throat> so yeah, um, this is similar to the backgrounds that we have. Um, well, that was previously shared. Um, I'm trying to remember, but I don't. So um. Magic ponies. Here's a few examples of ponies that embodied magic and how they rank their essential scores. Twilight Sparkle. When Twilight Sparkle was a class or 
a librarian studying magic in class or a librarian studying magic, she was getting from one to the other so as fast as possible, even though she was an experienced spellcaster and genius magic theorist, she didn't understand magic full potential until she started making friends. Uh, Twilight Sparkle. Uh, Twilight Sparkle's essence rank are Diamond Smart, Gold Speed, Silver Social, and Bronze Strength. Oh, that's a fascinating way to look at it. Okay. Um, that's... That, that, that. Huh. Ah. Oh, huh. okay. That that is very fascinating. <clears throat> Sakura, kind of a friends and an experienced shop shopkeeper. Sakura spends most of her days interacting with other creatures. Not a spellcaster. Sakura uses her knowledge of knowledge of magic to. Uh, Recreate spells, uh, spell effects as potions and elixirs. Living in the Everfree Forest is not easy, but she is tough enough to fend off the crocodile uh, and timber wolves, even if she doesn't have potions to avoid a confrontation. The cross essence strengths are diamond social, gold smart, silver strength, and bronze speed. Oh, so she's a bit slower. All right. So wait, there's diamond, gold, silver, and bronze. So those are your, uh, how to say, uh, that ranks, I guess. Oh, okay. That is, that's, that's a new way to do it. Okay, I, I'm, I'm very, <clears throat> I'm very, um, what you would call this, interested in how this works. Gilliam, Gilliam. A powerful, a colorful unicorn Philly found himself mastering magic even before getting her cutie mark. Just as how she knows where to put colors when she's painting, she knows how to cast spells by feeling and instinct. Gilliam essential rating, ratings are diamond social, like Sakura. Gold speed, silver strength, and bronze smart. Ah, okay. Smart is smart is a stat that's always there. So I'm guessing there's always four stats. So Twilight has diamond smart, gold speed, social, and strength. And social smart strength speed. Yeah, I guess they don't change, just move around. Spirit of Magic role features. As a pony who embodies the Spirit of Magic, you gain the following role perks. A talent for magic, level 1. Embodiment, embodying the Spirit of Magic makes you a talented pony. You can perform actions related to spellcasting other than action granted by role perks. More easily than most ponies. Once around, treat a standard action related to spellcasting as a move action or a move action as a free action. Uh, spell related to spellcasting as a move action or a move action as a free action. Uh, free actions related to spellcasting take no action for you, unlike your most uh, unlike most talents which applies to a specialization your talent for magic can apply to any skill test related to spellcasting uh, magic is magic <clears throat> level one once per turn you once per once per scene when you act in a well, when you act in the spirit of magic you gain a friendship point the friendship point blah, 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 and friendship, uh, and friendship circle below for ways you can use your friendship. Okay, cool, cool. So, um, 
So let's break it down. What I just read. There's one more page, but I'm just gonna focus on this one for a bit. Um. So, uh, basically, the first part of the notes here, uh, from here to here. Sorry, from here to here, it's just flavor text and a bit of a bit of explanation on what these ponies can do or what uh, they have and so on. For the what you call this, uh, magic ponies examples. Uh, this one is kind of cool because uh, they say uh, they they let us know that okay, you can uh, put your talents. Or you can you, you can arrange your talents in a way where uh, you can be like Twilight or you can be like Sakura and so on. So uh, having those, what you call this, uh, perks and whatnot arranged in certain ways is also doable. <clears throat> so uh, this one here, a talent for magic. This this one really perks my, uh, piques my interest because of this line here. Uh, once per round, treat standard actions related to spellcasting as a move action, or a move action as a free action. So what that, uh, if you play D and D, so if you let's just say this, um, you wanted to you you want to cast a fireball. So you want to cast a fireball. You can use uh, you, you can use your uh, move action to cast the fireball spell instead of your uh, actions. Uh, let me break it down even more. Um, in D&D, there's your movement, action, and bonus action. So wait, what was everything? Okay. Um, you have uh, you have three things that you can do. Well, not really three things, but you there are three phases or three things that uh, you have in your turn, which is movement, action, and bonus action. And then you end your turn and so on. So uh, movement, you can move your character from point to point within your uh, allotted speed. Uh, humans are usually 30, uh, 30 feet of speed or 30 feet of movement per turn. Uh, they have actions. Within actions, uh, you can do stuff like uh, attack a creature, help a friend, uh, check on something, hide, cast a spell, and so on. Bonus actions are things that you can do before or after an action. For example, I want to cast a cantrip spell. Uh, cantrip spells are spells that you don't use your spell slots to activate. So, example, if I want to cast the light spell, uh, can it's a counter spell. So I'll just say, okay, GM, um, before I attack or before I move. Oh, you can also uh, use bonus action at any phases of the turn. Uh, you can use it at the beginning, before movement, after movement, before attack, or after attack, or after the action, whatever. So uh, I, I want to say I want to use. The light spell. So I'll cast a light spell, uh, create a orb of, orb of light or whatever it is, and then I uh, move. Or uh, I I'll do something and so on. I mean I I'm not a spellcaster, so I don't really hundred percent know how the flow works. So I I'm a bit rusty on that one. But for this one, uh, getting back to ponies, <clears throat> so it says move action. Uh, sorry, uh, treat. A standard action related to spellcasting, let's just say I want to cast a fireball, as a move action. So instead of moving, I can use my move action to cast a fireball. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to cast a level whatever fireball. Boom. And then on my... And then it says... Or spellcasting as a move action or a move action as a free action. So there's there's oh, wow this this is kind of interesting where uh they're just, wow so basically so I I'm guessing um technically once you do this 
you can basically basically you don't move. Ah, okay. Ah. I guess you can cast twice the uh free action, which is conquer a bonus action. Ah. All right, I, I guess. So basically you can cast fireball, then fireball, and then you don't move. Or you cast a light spell, fireball, light spell. Something like that. I'm guessing I, I don't have the rules in front of me. I, I got no idea. And there's no breakdown really. So yes. So anyway, let's move on to the next page. Uh, do they say where I can use my 118? 188. Okay, so no. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> healings. Thankfully, heal uh, lots of. Uh, thankfully, health, lo lo loss, and defeat are not permanent. Health can be restored in a number of ways. Restore, uh, rest restores a certain. A creature's health, 6 hours of sleep within 24 hour period, removes all damage and usually all essence, uh, essence damage if applicable. Additionally, as a standard action, characters can give each other medicine, uh, medicine medical aid which may require a kit using science medicine, three uh, skill tests, they can restore health to living creatures if the target is within reach. The diff of difficulty, I guess, of a skill test to restore health is equal to 5 plus per health you want to restore. Hmm, okay. Uh... If you want to restore one health, the diff diff is the skill test uh, is ten. If you want to restore four as a single standard action, the required diff is twenty five skill test. Hmm. When a creature regains health, it is added to their current health up to their maximum. Example. During battle, a bugbear and injured Rainbow Dash lands next to Nurse Redheart. Rainbow Dash took 5 damage, leaving her with 1 health. Oh wow, 6. Okay. Uh, 1 health out of her maximum of 6. This, co this combat is going badly and Nurse Redheart knows the other ponies need Rainbow Dash back in the fight. Nurse Redheart is, uh, is specialized in science, medicine and has a D12 rank, meaning she's confident she can succeed at a Div 20 to restore 3 health, and maybe even Div 25 to restore 4 health, but the risk of wasting her turn trying to reach a Div 30 and heal all of Rainbow Dash's damage makes her nervous. She chooses to go for the 20, uh, Div 20 and hope for healing is enough to get Rainbow Dash through the fight. Technically, you, 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 you'll you be at 90% with that. Like, for one, that's five. Uh, your max is six. Huh? <clears throat> so, um, this part here, I, I, I don't really understand what I'm looking at here because um, there's a lot of things that they're, they're sharing. Uh, okay, so diff. I'm guessing difficulty. So the difficulty of a skill test to restore health is equal to 5 plus uh, 5 plus 5 per health you want to restore. Uh, restore. If you want to restore one health, the difficulty of the skill test is 10. I want to restore four. Uh, so restore one, DC is 10. 
so the oh wow i i'm getting piece bits and pieces but without a <clears throat> without reading the item without reading really reading the full thing i'm i'm at a loss but from what i can understand uh to restore some uh, health uh one point of health is equal to five plus the five plus five per health you want to restore so if i want to restore one so technically that's a 10 if i want to restore two that's a 20 no oh you know what i i'm giving up on this one i i, I don't know but uh it's an interesting concept and i can't wait to try it out <laughs> uh damaging objects and items not every target is a creature you can Attack an object or an item directly in hopes of damaging or destroying it. Uh, if the object being targeted is being carried by a creature, the attacker is again against the evasion defense of the creature holding it. Otherwise, it is against the toughness of the object. The object size class may modify this if successful the object takes the effect of the attack the toughness of the object are based on what they are sorry pre predominant uh, predominantly made of their toughness can also be used as their strength uh, starting health uh, a zero health at zero health the object is destroyed in some Cases, a game master will allow the object to be struck without a test as it isn't that tough or destroyed automatically if it's fragile. Usually what make what matters for the story is not whether the object is can be destroyed, but how long it takes to do so. This could lead to the mass destruction of properties like building and section of wooden forest, depending on how the PC handle this sort of thing, such as such wanted the disregard for public property could cause problem in the future. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> um, this 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 um section here is very fascinating because it's one of those uh role playing aspect that a lot of people don't really a lot of people really uh, don't really pay attention to because when you play uh, a tabletop RPG you, you're mostly thinking about okay uh, how do I spend my move uh, action economy at its maximum so I'm going to hit the creature or hit the monster whatever it is uh, with my actions and then use my movements to go here and there blah 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 technically I want to use my things to the fullest. And then you have me, who's playing a barbarian, thinking that I need to get through that wall. Okay, I smash the wall with my sledgehammer. And now the GM's thinking, wait, what? <laughs> ah, true story, though. So, yeah, this 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 table here, tells me that objects in the world have their own health and are uh, have their own health and are subjected to damage. So uh, a, an example is this. Let's just say um, Twilight gets blasted by Kirik and it's flying across the map and she smacks into the what you call this the window or the balcony balcony door of her library in uh in Ponyville uh that breaks now to simp uh, it's simple enough because of velocity blah 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 so uh, basically the GM will just describe oh um Twilight sparkles, flies around, blah, blah, blah. And she 
lands uh, she uh, hits the door to her uh, balcony uh, in her balcony and smashes through so basically there's no questions asked like the gm says says like uh, it'll just destroy automatically or in scenario here here says um okay uh twilight blast t-rex and she blasts her uh uh sorry give me a second i'm trying to think of a scenario here okay uh twilight sparkle blasts t-rex with her magical powers and blows t-rex far landing him against the uh landing him back against the mountain uh and then <clears throat> As a GM, I'll say, I will roll something. I will roll something stating, okay, uh, I roll pretty high, and I'll say, or I'll just take the roll from what Twilight took, uh, what Twilight did to blast T-Rex, and states that, okay, uh, as T-Rex went flying, uh, smashing to the mountainside, uh, you see a huge Creator form where she, he land, uh, where he crashed. Uh, bits and pieces of the mountain fell, and you can see a crater form around where T Rex landed, and so on. So you can do, you can basically what this page here is, is just more or less uh, flavor text in some situations. And that's just for flavor. Let's just say you want to go through a door uh, let's just say that you have you know what a good example a good example is uh snowflake ah uh, no no snowflake bulk, bulk biceps yes you have bulk biceps going through the spa going through the wall of the spa to get into the job the gm will just say uh, or would if you if the gm's playing as um bulk biceps he'll just probably say that okay uh bulk bicep pressures through the wall of the spa and screams oh yeah and if a player wants to do it uh the gem will just say all right cool i would like you to roll for strength and see how hard you kind of bash through the walls and like that. And I mean, there's way. Basically, this is just. Um, yeah, basically, this is just flavor text, but it is fun. I, I love this. I love this fable. The last one is Combat, uh, Magic in Combat. Uh, spellcasters can change the landscape of the battle more than most creatures. Spells can do anything from attack from a great distance, turn a pony into a combat juggernaut, or manipulate the minds of enemies to forget why they were fighting. However, in combat, magics cause weigh uh, more heavily on the spellcaster than ever. The pressure, uh, the pressure to not only cast the right spell in the moment, but save spellcasting potential for further problems take Planning most combatants don't need to worry about. Casting magic in combat. There's page missing, but I'm going to read from what I can tell. As a reminder, any other time you cast a spell, your spell has a cost. To cast a spell, you must. What? What must I do? Oh no! Okay, so uh, the magic in combat thing here is totally different from what Dungeons and Dragons do. Uh, technically, in Dungeons and Dragons or D and D for short, is that okay? Um, there is. Let's just say this. Um, out of combat, I want to lit a fire, or I want to burst down a door. I'll just say to the GM, uh, GM, I want to burst through the door. So what I would do is I'll cast fireball onto the wall and or onto the door and blow it up. Uh, roll for damage and 
so on and if it hits it hits i guess and that's how uh, magic is cast outside of combat in combat it's technically the same thing where okay i cast my fireball uh, do whatever the rule says and it's done uh, if it hits it hits if it doesn't hit it doesn't hit uh, damage is rolled and so on and so on but over here this is a bit different because judging by what it says like if you want to cast a spell in combat it's going to be a bit more difficult because the line here says however in combat magic costs weigh more heavily on spellcasters than ever the pressure to not only cast the right spell in the right moment but save spellcasting potential for future problems take planning most combatants don't need so there's i think there's problem solving they get in cast with magic in out of game something like that and it takes up a lot I, I guess i guess that's it like i guess that's one of the few things that uh they're trying to say that yeah you can cast spells but it will cost you like spell slots uh in dnd there's things called spell slots for um magicians or spellcasters uh, basically what that means is that for level spells they can cast it X amount of spells equal per level per long rest. So if you're starting out, you'll probably have two spell slots or three spell slots. And that means, okay, I can cast level spells uh, twice or three times per day. As I go further in level, I gain more spell slots and I gain uh, higher level slots to cast those spells so and so on and so on and so on so this is uh, that's dnd but if they're saying that this is the, almost the same thing but we're not really telling you directly that is that is yeah i mean there's one way to look at it there's one way to look at it but that's the news for this week so let's wrap it up Let's change to the next topic. And next topic is what have I been doing my week? So, week has been pretty okay. Um, watch movies, play D and D, play uh, Magic. Um, for Magic, I brought up, I rebuilt a really old, cool old deck, and that was the Zangief Street Fighter deck. Um, have fun with it. Needs a lot of tweaking because I don't feel like. I'm getting the essence of what I want. So that needs to be tweaked. For D&D, had another fun time. Didn't really do anything outlandish or fun or basically uh, jaw-dropping amazing. It's dumb stuff because I'm a barbarian. And it was okay. It was okay. Uh, it, was a, it was a kind of a short session too. So didn't really have time to or they really had the uh, experience to go crazy so yeah uh, th that's that uh i did also watch a movie and the movie i watched for this week was the flash okay i i, I know there's a lot of negative preconception about the Flash, Silver said that he won't be watching because of Ezra Miller, and yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna go in there. But yeah, um, my friend wanted to watch it, and yeah, I did. Besides the point of Ezra, just gonna talk about it as the show itself. The show itself was actually fun. It was a lot of interesting things going on with it, uh, as because there was a lot of uh, Easter eggs, a lot of uh, callbacks to previous things. If you were a fan of uh, DC movies, this includes from the original uh, Batman, or original whatever it is. There, it's there because um, judging or just just looking at the movie, watching the movie. It's a quote-unquote love letter to all of 
these these uh, paths. Uh, they kind of, they, they, I'm trying to walk around in circles without spoiling the movie. And technically, this is one of those uh, comic book to movie adaptations without really stating it was. Because this is the Flashpoint Paradox where Flash goes back in time to do something. And by doing said stuff, he changed time. And yeah, um, Flashpoint Paradox, if I'm not mistaken, is also a DC animated uh, special. So if you are interested, you can uh, watch the animated movie. Uh, in my personal opinion, the animated movie is much better. But for The Flash, Pretty interesting. I, I like what it's trying to tell. The movie itself doesn't really take itself too seriously at point. And it there, there's a balance of comedy and drama and action. And most of the comedy is on uh, Barry, who is the Flash. Uh, he, he kind of what you want to call this? Um, bears the weight of the comedic timing when he, uh, when most comedies, uh, sorry, when uh, a comedic scene happens, because uh, spoilers, you get uh, Batman from no, Christopher Nolan. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember that guy. Give me a second. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. See if I can find a bat man. Uh, Batman, let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, Michael Keaton, yes, Michael Keaton. So you, there, there's a in the movie where there's Michael Keaton who plays Batman he appears in this uh, timeline and so on and it, it's just fascinating to see what happened what how, how do how they want to play the movie it, it's it's really fun and cool uh, and you know what I, I don't know if I should I if I How do I put this? Movie is fun. Movie is pretty interesting. But there's this huge moral dilemma some people have. Uh, Silver mentioned that he won't be watching because something. So I respect that. I, on the other hand, think that all that hard work that the editors, directors, filmography, whatever, it, uh, all these people behind scenes did for the movie. Uh, it, it's one of those things. So, in my personal opinion, I say that the movie was a fun and entertaining movie to watch and experience. Would I tell you guys at home you should watch it. Oh, boy. Honestly speaking, yes, but wait for it to be released on HBO Max, HBO Go, whatever HBO things is, or whatever Wonder Brothers thing is. I, I think they're working with HBO, right? So wait, wait for it to be there. So, my overall rating for The Flash would be a 7 out of 10. It, it's not it's not the best out there, but it was a fun watch. Uh, some might find it slow at some parts because 
well, they have to kind of explain a lot of stuff because they don't have what Marvel have with their setup. Like, even this one, um, you're not even sure that this is going to be a setup movie or not because we, we know that James Gunn is taking over and but we don't know to... We got no idea where the Flash is going to be in the timeline or so on. I, I, anyway, I've been babbling for too long now. Let's let's wrap it up. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dimitrogmail.com. Uh, <clears throat> you can also catch us on the Twitter, social Twitter account is at NBS. The show's Twitter account is at the NBS show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Uh, also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you can catch me, Silver, Quill, Tara, Jacob, Reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, specials, and movies. Sometimes we like to do other things than ponies. Those can be cartoons, anime, uh, comic books, mangas, movies, video games, or just general, general discussion. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky night, and also myself, lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode. Yes, show. See ya. <laughs>